right or wrong. There's just interpretation sometimes. Um, you know, those areas will be a little bit easier to identify and manage because you will have um, the, the judgment to see them. Introduces new ideas. Uh, obviously, like I said before, uh, you need to go deeper. If you're talking about a topic that's been around for a while, you don't want to argue the more common things. You want to find the newer ideas, uh, things that maybe people haven't heard about. Raises awareness. This is kind of like number four about understanding issues. By doing research, we can become aware of problems in society in other places in the world or just in for people that we weren't aware of. Like I said, we live fairly insular lives and we know about the things that usually impact us, but we don't necessarily understand or know about problems for other people. And research is how we can find out about that. And it is the part that builds empathy, which is always very important for, I think, for all people, but especially for a writer. Uh, encourages curiosity. I am the worst about getting down the rabbit hole when I get online and before I know it, I'm click, click, clicking, and I've spent an hour researching something, reading about frogs in South Africa or something when I'm writing about something else, right? Um, again, I think sometimes you have to play a game with yourself when it comes to taking classes and you're having to write things that you wouldn't choose to write, that if you can pick something that you actually enjoy and you can really get into the mind, you can psych yourself, right? Mindset, you, you learned this in your learning strategies class, but mindset is so important. If you can look at something and say, okay, I'm going to learn something about this that I didn't know. I'm going to write something that's going to make me a better person, a better father, a better athlete, a better minister, a better, you know, whatever, teacher. Um, then hopefully that will help you write it because you will have some stake in it, right? There's something that you enjoy reading about. Um, and the last one prepares you to deal with the future. And again, this might be one that would be very surprising to a lot of people. I think building credibility, helping you find new ideas, those are things you probably, that makes sense. But preparing you to deal with the future. Um, so when you do research, it's going to give you information about trends that might be on the, you know, coming. It might be about talking about concerns that people have for the future in certain areas. And so you can start being aware of those, right? You can start paying attention. Um, and, you know, like if you don't know what you want to do, let's say. My niece right now is really kind of struggling with trying to figure out what she wants to do. And she's got a couple of careers that she's kind of going back and forth in. And she thinks she's going to settle on computer science because she knows that that's got a lot of job opportunities for things that she can work from home. She's having a baby in March. And so she's kind of had to stop, you know, pause her education. Um, and she's really looking for anything that would allow her to work from home, especially. Um, and so she's pretty much decided on computer science. Um, you know, she thought about the future. She considered what would work for her. Um, let's say that, you know, you want to go into some environmental kind of environmental science, right? Well, then look at the trends. What are people worried about when it comes to the environment? And then maybe you can specialize in an area that, you know, people say is going to be uh, really needed, right? And so that's how research can prepare you for the future. So bottom line here is that this is an important class. And again, English is what we call a life skill. That means that we're not just teaching you something that you will only use in your college classes, right? I think a lot of what you learn is actually something that can be valuable for you outside of the classroom, but most of it isn't necessarily directly important. But when you take that, you know, introduction to Microsoft computers, that's a life skill class, right? When you take, you know, speech, that can be a life skill class because it's about communication. So computers and speech and English, those are all communication-based topics. And so this is a class that not only is going to help you in other classes, right? If you take psychology or sociology, guess what? You've got to write a research paper in there. So that's going to help you with that class. If you take some of the humanities courses, a lot of times that has a writing component. Um, history and government ask you to write papers. When you get into your own field, the farther you go up, if you have to get a four-year degree or a graduate degree, you're going to have to do more writing, 
right? Uh, if you're an English major, you've got to write every single class, right? I don't think I ever took a class that I didn't have two research papers to do. Uh, once I got to graduate school, and even my upper grad classes, uh, usually at least two. So uh, obviously, that's why I have a lot of discernment, because I've had to do this a lot. But like I was saying, you know, why do we use research? Well, think about it. When you're trying to find the best Mexican restaurant in Oklahoma City, right? You research. You might ask your family, and then you realize you shouldn't listen to your family because they have no taste when it comes to Mexican food, right? Uh, you might go to an app like Yelp, Y-E-L-P, right? That's one of my go-to apps on my cell phone, and that allows me to search for a particular service. It might be restaurant. It might be plumber. It might be hair salon, and I can set the location, and I can set, like, you know, five mile, 25 mile radius, and it's going to list all of the businesses or services that meet that parameter. And then I'm going to see reviews of that. I'm going to see pictures sometimes. I might, if it's a restaurant, I might even have an online menu so I can see prices and what they offer, right? Uh, I'm going to get um, directions to get there that I can then open up on my Google Maps, on my, my computer, or my car, and it's going to show me how to get there, right? That's research, if you're going to buy a car, you probably get the car facts. You probably look at all sorts of reports online. You probably talk to people. Hey, have you ever had this kind of car? You're going to look maybe for the best deal. That's research. If you've ever bought an appliance, right? Um, like I bought a little $50 Black & Decker handbag a few years ago. And I mean, it took me a week before I decided on that one because I was reading the reviews and thinking about, oh, and there's like 50-50, half the people love it and half don't. And I really like, do I really want to plunk down, you know, 50 bucks on this thing when half the people said it was awful, right? Um, and so that's research. Um, if you're dating someone and you ask your friends, do you know something about this guy, right? <laughs> and you Google them and you look at their Facebook page, that's research. So you actually do research a lot. You just don't necessarily identify that. And, you know, we're going to be building on those very skills this semester. So um, I'm looking forward to the next step. Um, you can look on the calendar to see what that is. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.